We're back in the garage again with the Evil Race 86. And one of the issues we're gonna fix now is what happened to us on the race where we lost clutch. Now, it's not the first time it's ever happened to us on this car. Um, actually, in any of our 86s, as soon as the clutch fluid is exposed to a lot of heat, what ends up happening is there's a chamber at the bottom which gunks up. And if you don't regularly flush that fluid, it ends up gunking up to the point where you actually start losing pedal at the track. And you might come off the track and then it comes back again and then you're fine and then you go out on the track and it does it again. What needs to happen is you need to take the uh, master cylinder out and you need to clean that gunk out. And what you need to do is then replace your clutch fluid on a much more regular basis. What we found to work was at least once every one to two track days just cycle the fluid through just do a nice pressure bleed just to make it nice and simple i got a bit lazy with it i went for three or four months without being flushed and then i sucked it all out put new fluid in didn't check to see if it had gunked up again and the clutch failed on us at the enduro which meant that we had to finish the enduro in fourth gear luckily it worked in our favor but you're not always going to be so lucky so i'm going to quickly show you how to do this it is a very easy job to do and you can do it at home and it's a very nice quick fix and it's a great maintenance item on the Toyota 86 and the Subaru BRZ. So the first thing you need to do is you need to get to the clutch pedal and up at the top over here, you'll have the arm coming through from the master cylinder connected. It's simply got this through it with a little pin that is through the hole on that over there and that holds it in. So you pull this pin out, do not lose this pin. Very easy to do so. And then you just slide this out and that's all you need to do underneath the car to get it disconnected from the clutch pedal. Then you move over to the engine bay. Now I did start doing this before I realized it's probably a worthwhile recording since it happens so regularly. Now normally in the engine bay, you'll have the master cylinder here and you'll have like a bendy solid line. You've got a flex line that goes across there. Ideally removing the solid line makes it easier to remove the whole unit. Otherwise disconnect the uh, flexi line and remove your standard black strut support over there and that'll help make it easier to get this out in my case i've just got a braided line i've disconnected it from the end over here drained out all the fluid removed the two 12 mil nuts that hold that in place and then you slide it out now because i've disconnected the flexi line i'm able to maneuver it past there past that and that's the unit over there there will always be a little bit of clutch fluid left in this. Remember clutch and brake fluid is not good for your paint. So make sure you clean up anywhere that you see it. Use one rag for your clutch and your brake fluid and do not use it again, throw it away. Now the problem with this, and, and you can actually notice it if you have a look inside there, this fluid starts turning black. And when you do flush out the fluid, you might see some fluid actually sitting inside there that's black. And that's that black that's causing the issue. So. Underneath, we've got this flat plate over here. You've got a circlip holding it in place. Remove the circlip. This all comes out. Make sure you keep all the bits that come out and remember the order it comes out. And literally, once you get that out, all you have to do is give it a good clean. Put it all together back with the circlip or put it back in the car, fill it up with fluid, and then you won't have that clutch issue again as long as you keep on cycling the fluid.
putting this back in place, what you've got to do is try and center that clip in there to go over the pedal. Now it's kind of a bit of a feel. It's nice if you have someone to give you a hand with it so that they can direct you. But as long as it hasn't rotated from when you took it out, it should be fairly easy to put it back in place. Now before you go ahead and tighten that up, go back inside the car and put that clip back on there just in case. And then once you've got the pin and that clip back in place, you can start bolting it up. Also, if you're tracking your car, I highly recommend replacing it with a braided line. It does make this job a lot easier. The solid line that does all sorts of twists and turns can be pretty frustrating for this job. Now, we just fill it up and bleed it up. It also helps running a race fluid for this. So everyone knows that we're on the golf competition brake fluid as one less thing to worry about. We use the same stuff for the clutch. Fill that up nice and high and then we need to put a bleeder on the other side and pump it through. I've now made a mess. The um, bottom of this over here has popped out. Now I need to get it out again. And once you're happy that there's not much more air coming through there, close this off over here, the bleed valve, close it off, and then pump the clutch up until it gets pressure. Now I've got some pressure on the pedal. So what I'm gonna do is top this up even further and open up the bleed valve and pump fluid through it now. So you put the cap back on, make sure it creates a vacuum. And now we've got a fully operational clutch again. Well, one thing I didn't say to take off to make this job a little bit easier for yourself, which is something I'm gonna put back in place now, is just the brake booster vacuum hose. Put that back in place. And now we have clutch again. Nice and easy job. Make sure when you're putting the master cylinder back together that you put the circlip back in very, very tightly. I had to pull it out again, reset it. This time I took a screwdriver and made sure that circlip was in there nice and tight. All done. Last night, gone home a bit later and decided, well, let's quickly get the stickers off the 86. The Skid 86 we've had for three years now, it's done over 50,000 Ks of skid pan, drifting, racing, all sorts of stuff. So we're down in the Gold Coast. Miss Skid Controls decided to drive it down for me. As you can see, we got damage to the side, damage over there, taking all the stickers off the car. Except for the rear bumper because that's getting replaced. We've got some damage over there. The repair work that was done to the car previously needs a bit of a touch up. So we bought it down to Dane at Loco Customs. We've also got some dents on the car over there as well. Leaving here for a couple of weeks because we're not using it for a couple of weeks. And he's going to work his magic on the car and see what we can do with it. I've basically given him creative license on the car, so I'm excited to see what color he comes up with with the car. We're also going to have the uh, canopy left over here so the canopy can get color matched to the, the ute. So keep an eye out for the episode where we reveal the color of the car when we come pick it up. We'll show you some other cars that he does. 
Make sure you check out our website at skidcontrol.com.au, facebook.com forward slash skidcontrol, and Instagram at skid underscore control. On the next episode, we'll be revealing our new race car. We'll see you soon.